Call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee to order for Monday evening, March 18th, 2019. It's at 7.02 p.m. Good evening, Councilors. As our Council President indicated to you, he will be out of um, state until next um, week, the 28th of March. He will be back. So until then, I'm sorry, I'm back. I know I'm like a bad penny, but I'm here anyhow. So um, Somebody's got to do it. First item I do want to read to you because it will pertain to item number um, number two when we get to it. Um, I had conversation this morning with the mayor who is doing um, much better but also indicated to me um, in an email this afternoon that he sent to me, Councilor Neary, dear Councilor Neary, uh, acting city council president, I regret that I am unable to attend the finance committee meeting scheduled for this evening. Doctor still says that his nighttime activities are limited at this point in time. Also want to in inform me that our CFO, Mr. Clarkson, is traveling out of state. However, um, any questions pertaining to uh, discussion with the number two item, uh, we also have our former uh, CFO, Mr. Condon, here as well if we need to speak with him. So um, he's confident that Mr. Uh, our Chief of Police and, and, and Mr. Condon can answer anything, answer any questions you have. And if not, feel free to contact him. Um, uh, the mayor himself. So that being said, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, would you read item number one? Appointment of Daniel LeBranch of 32 DuPont Circle of Brockton, Mass, to the Brockton Community Access Board of Directors for a term of three years. Invited Daniel LeBranch. Mr. LeBranch, you're here. I, I know the microphone, it, it always travels. <laughs> Good evening, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? Good. Very good. Thank you. Here's your chance if you wish to make a comment to the uh, members of the City Council in regards to your appointment to the Community Access Board. Appreciate it. Yes. Uh, I've been involved with BCE for 28 years. And I've been a producer of Tele Lumiere since 1992. And uh, my show is one hour show. And I've already produced f about 570 shows. And um, be doing, being a producer for so long, not being involved in management, I like to see the other side. I like to, uh, I like BCA. I like to make BCA better. I'm sure there are many improvements that could be uh, that, that 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 could be made. And I would really appreciate it if I have a chance to serve BCA. And I've been a part of BCA for so long, I want to serve BCA on a higher level. Very good. <coughs> Councilors, Councilor Sullivan. Chairman, I, 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 uh, I'm going to make a favorable recommendation. Uh, without question, Mr. LeBranch, and I've had the honor and privilege to be on his show several times. He's a true gentleman. He, he, he gives so much to the city of Brockton. And I think he, with his skill set, his experience, and his personality, he's just going to do wonderful endeavors. So I, I make a favorable recommendation okay, back to the right. council. Motion's been made and seconded on the motion. Councilor Chairman, um, I, 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 I personally, Mr. Labranch, and I think that uh, he is, he's an amazing human being. And given the fact that based on his story, what he just said, he's been uh, involving within our community for 28 years. And some of you do know that. I'm 28, so it means that he's been involved in since I was born. And I do believe, you know, Mr. LaBranche will not only contribute uh, his knowledge and also his ability to do so, but also doing what he thinks is best for our community. And of course, he just said it himself. Um, he's been having a show for so long so far. And I think that some of us uh, do have an opportunity to watch him on TV interviewing everybody, not just uh, the Haitian community. Why not the entire community? And I think that uh, by having someone like Mr. Labranche, um, you know, on that board, it will truly um, elevate, if not um, increase, um, the ability for us to do what we think is best for our community. And I could not be more, more happy to see my brother, uh, Council at Large Robert Sullivan, uh, make that motion. And of course, all of us saying it. And in the spirit of our city and, and what we stand for and what we believe here, uh, I'd be more than happy to say that um, this is one of the best appointments that we could possibly 
make in 2019. So with that being said, I would like to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the opportunity and also thank uh, Mr. Labanche for everything that you've been doing for us. And, um, and as you know, we are very close. And um, when you got involved, I was born. So let's see what <laughs> happened. Thank you. Well said, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other councilors? Motion's been made and, and seconded to send back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. We'll be acting on it next, uh, next Monday evening, Mr. LaRanche. And, and thank you, and thank you for wanting to serve. We appreciate it very much. Good job. much. Truly, I appreciate it. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number two. <laughs> Appropriation in the amount of $400,000 from full-time salaries to police overtime invited Honorable Mayor <clears throat> William Carpenter, John Crowley, Chief of Police, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. How are you this evening? I'm good, thank you. Very good. Anything you'd like to say, I'm sure, before we get started? Um, this is actually, it's, it's a transfer from my overtime, my um, salaries to overtime. Is that what it is? You're just transferring from one? Yes. From one account to the other, is that correct? Yeah. Is that right, Mr. Uh, Councilors, I, I, I came at the request of the mayor because Mr. Clarkson is, uh, is not able to be here. Uh, there's a did, scrivener's error on the request. Okay. The re chief requested a transfer from the salaries account to the overtime account. It was worded as an appropriation in the mayor's letter. It should have been worded as a transfer. And the difference is that an appropriation is a majority vote, but a transfer is a two-thirds vote. So this should be corrected to a transfer. If you see, the source is actually an appropriated source of money. It's already appropriated money. It's a transfer. Right. Okay. So that has to be. I, I think we. I think we sh should amend it here, if I'm not correct. And then that way, there we know that it's going to get back down, stay as the way that it Mr. should be. Mr. So Chairman? I would, Council Cruz. Make a motion to, in the first paragraph, slash the word appropriated and substitute the word uh, transferred, and. Was submitted by the mayor as follows: so, uh, slash appropriation in the amount of four hundred thousand dollars, and in instead put in transfer in the amount of four hundred thousand dollars. And we've had a second to that. Mm -hmm. All in favor of that? Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes, and you gals got that correct. You got that correct. Okay, very Motion good. To recommend favor. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded to recommend favorably back to the full city council on the motion. Council uh, Sullivan, I'm sorry. And uh, first of all, before we get into this, I want to thank you. You did a great job at ordinance the other night, so thank you. Um, relative to this, Chief, how much um, money has been spent to date in this fiscal year relative to overtime for the police? Because right typically, now, we, you know, in the summer months, we, we, we see it increased. Yes. Right now, we're right at approximately... 86%. 86%. Thank you, Chief. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anything else, Council? Any other, any other Councilors? Did we take a vote? Not yet. No, Okay. All right. Motion has been made and second to send back to the full City Council a favor recommendation. All in favor? Mr. Chairman. On the Opposed? motion. On the motion, Councilor uh, Derricourt. Thank you, Chief, for taking the time to uh, come to the audience committee um, last week. So I think um, you did an amazing job. So I just want to take five and three, four. Um, everything that you've been doing for the city of Brockton and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All in favor, just so we make sure we get it opposed. All in favor. And we'll go back to the next week's meeting, uh, Chief. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number three, Madam Clerk. Ordered that the Brockton City Council, acting on behalf of the city of Brockton, for consideration of $1, does hereby grant an easement to Massachusetts Electric Company a Massachusetts corporation having its principal office at 40 Sylvan Road, Waltham, Massachusetts, 02451, for purposes of unrestricted 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year-round ingress and egress by persons, equipment, or vehicles of various loads from the public way to access grantee electric facilities, whether now existing or hereafter installed, located on certain real property abutting the grantor's land, which abutting real property is known as 0 West Elm Street, Brockton, Massachusetts, and identified as Brockton Assessor Parcel ID 091-004 to provide electric service 
to said abutting real property and others, and further, that the City Council authorizes the Mayor to execute the grant of easement and to make other actions necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of the same. Invited Bob Malley, Executive Director, Parking Authority, Jeffrey Anatole, South Shore Property Management. Mr. Malley, if you, uh, or you both can. <coughs> Councils, this is really sim simply um, a granting of, of an easement because when you look at the partial ID 09991, excuse me, dash 004, I believe it's the parking lot, if I'm not mistaken. And and if you look at 005, that was the uh, the building. So all we're doing here is really granting an easement. We're not transferring any property. There's nothing to, There's nothing really transferring. So unless you want to add some more to no, it. That's correct. It's lot B3. It, it, and we're in the process after the easement, uh, assuming it's approved, uh, we will be leasing the lot uh, for the uh, property to be built at 47 West Elm Street. Right, right. Yeah, so it's just lot. it's just a simple it's a straight motion up motion recommend second. Second. motion been made and second on the motion council on Powell. the motion I, i'm sure it's going to be done but for the record it'll be fenced in adequately the public is not going to be able to get near this transformer pad or oh, yeah 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 i mean national grid requires we just went over today six inch steel alley columns every 12 inches around that it. it's like nothing can get through there okay and is that part of the agreement that they've no that's just in the national grid bylaws for installation well, I, I know it's standard, but if it's not in writing, I, you know. We, we can put it in there, and we have to do it, so. Yeah, we'll it's put it in. Okay. All right, well, we're granting the mayor authority to carry out whatever needs to be done, so I would I just. pass that along. Thank right. you. Yeah. It'll, it'll be well recognized from you, so. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Okay. Yes, All set? All right. Great. Thanks. Madam Clerk, item number four. Resolved to invite Captain John Hallisey, the chair of the Traffic Commission, to discuss with the City Council the situation with illegally parked cars on residential streets and as to why, during the latest snowstorm, that enough was not done to address this issue and why, when contacting the police and the non-emergency number, residents were told that at times supervisors were not available. Invited John Hallisey, Captain, Traffic Commission, John Crowley, Chief of Police. Captain uh, Hallisey, Traffic Commissioner, you're present here this evening. Um, anything you want to say before um, I go to Council Yes, Borgata? I just, if I can address it. Sure. On the situation with cars parked in violation of the snow emergency, I just want to let you know necessary action was accomplished to assure that all residents of Brockton had safe and adequate police, fire, and ambulance access. This was brought about by citations, moving vehicles, and if unavoidable, cars were towed. More than enough was done that evening to address the issue. In short, the entire police department, the snow detail, and the shift, both shifts, 4 to 12 and 12 to 8, did an outstanding job that night. And it's the as far as the other one goes, I wasn't the shift commander that night, but I do have knowledge of what happened, about why they couldn't, they possibly couldn't reach a sergeant or, or a thing, if you want me to expand uh, on is that. that a, is that a, well, uh, Council Borgard, why questions. don't you, yeah. Yes. All, right, all right, then if you want to. What we had was, the, we had a woman calling up every 15 minutes. She wanted to make sure that her neighbors got tickets. She kept on calling every 15 minutes, calling again, again. She wanted to speak to a sergeant. The sergeant that was downstairs talked to her at least five or six times. Another sergeant talked to her. I finally talked to her at 11 o'clock because we prioritize our calls. She didn't like those answers. She wanted them to be there. It's not dinner reservations, a priority one call, domestic violence, car accidents. They bump them to the back. We finally ended up getting to Belcher Ave and did tickets. She still wasn't satisfied. And just, it's the way it goes. Council, go ahead. You can okay, get your, well, your resolve. resolve. And um, this is such a weird little setup here, so I'll stand. Okay. And um, for a few reasons. One of them is I'm dealing with people. I have a few streets here. Cabot Street, and you know that's come in front of Traffic Commission because we have the illegally parked cars. Sherman Street. I have an older woman, and the neighbors are just parking illegally along there. 
and Quincy Street. Now we're having people park on Quincy Street and North Quincy Street. I mean, this is, a, as far as I'm concerned, I'll use the term main drag. And it just, that night I called several times because the woman on Sherman Street's definitely probably close to, you know, at least 70. And um, she's older. She's concerned about it. I think part of the problem is we know that some people are having or creating illegal apartments, which, you know, we've discussed this at Traffic Commission before. And they don't want to let people park in the driveway where they're living and they're out on the streets. Now, Traffic Commission did a super job before we started the winter, um, you know, uh, what do I call it? The, the you know, the um, winter emergency, yeah, parking. And then we have Thank the you. snow emergency. Thank you. So what we do here is, I, you know, you, you had that the digital boards in different locations. And I mean, we try to send this out, but no matter what, some people just, you know, don't get it. Okay. So I am glad you put out some tickets. Okay. In the meanwhile, though, I mean, like, here's the article in the paper, three, 64 cars, you know, towed. All right, Correct. but I am I'm on the east side, um, and people are really you know frustrated. I mean you know with the Sprag, for example, Sherman. I have some nice little pictures here of um, trucks, you know, and, and, and narrow. But the thing is, I wanted to get in front of this because it was frustrating because I called the police department four times and they said there's no supervisor. And it's like the supervisor, yeah, the supervisor is an in. That was one thing. You may have been talking to that woman that kept on calling at that time, too. But did they get back to you? Uh, no, I didn't ask them to get back to me. I called again. Because I wish you called me. I would have explained yeah, it to you. Okay. That, so that one was, but again, this was the woman on Sherman Street that kept on asking. And she's repeatedly Ooh. had problems with this. And this is why we went through the whole thing in traffic commission with the no parking on one side, et cetera. And that, for some people, means it's okay to park. So, I'm trying to get in front of this too because snow is just, it's a horror show because there's just not enough space for everything. But on the other hand, before you know it, it might actually be nice out and people are going to have graduation parties and that's fine, we understand that once in a while. But there, there's going to be other people that just seem to have a party all the time and they just park wherever they want and now we still have tight streets here where people can't get up and down. But I mean, here's some stuff from the paper. I mean, I'm lucky, in one street they plowed and, and went around. And I don't expect them to plow a street like mine immediately. But I don't have trouble with people double parking. I guess there's no illegal apartments on my street, which I'm grateful. But there's many, and I mean, the piles here, of people seeing, I mean, I can bring these over, and um, I don't know if they can be taken. But I mean, this is the type of things that people were seeing why are these vehicles on the street? And my big thing is, is, I want them to be ticketed. Or should we turn around and call a tow uh, company and have them towed? I mean, I'd be happy to pass these around to my colleagues. You know, I don't know right. if you want to look at them. And the thing is, is that I'm concerned. We have a large elderly population, of which I'm a member of. And um, now, yeah, they, we have to deal with we want to get the ambulances down, we want to get the fire trucks down, and they take up space. But these cars aren't supposed to be on there, period, a lot of the time. And that's, that's where the frustration comes in. So not only are they there when it's a snow emergency, they're there when they're not supposed to be there on the no parking sign. Another street that drives me nuts is if you're trying to cut from the east to the west side, is Prospect Street. I mean, you know, this street, cars parked on both sides, it specifically says no parking from here to corner, and you can, you know, barely get through. And, I mean, I go back to the late Paul Sullivan, um, who was on traffic for a long time, and he always talked about how that that's a, that was a huge problem. And he lived on the east side, not far from me. But, anyway, that, th there's three things going on here. So, I mean, the thing is, during the snow emergency, I think it's kind of important to say, we, you know, um, and this board thing, I'm not sure about the board, but they kept on saying it's on the board. So I don't know if it's that's something. It's a protocol something. where we, yeah. pr priority one, priority two, priority three calls. Yeah, okay. But if it's safe to get a fire truck, police cars, that would be a last priority. We get some of the streets that are more narrower first. Right. Towing okay. takes about 25 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes to get a car out. We keep on going. 
It's just, it because takes time. We're not going to be able to get every single car out. I, I realize, and but there seems to be more, and I don't know if maybe on those, you know, nights, and I don't know if this would be something you should be discussing well, I know, with the uh, chief. 12 yeah. to 7 during the snow ban. Yeah. In 2016, we did about 500 tickets. 2019, uh -huh. we did 1,900. We've done close to 2,100 now. It's, we still got two weeks left, so. Yeah. We've gone up about 400%. Oh, well, that's, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I, again. But we're never going to. There's always going to be a street here, a woman calling sure. every 15 minutes, and there's everyone, I, for every complaint I have for that, I get one for, why'd you tow my car? I was working, I didn't hear about it. Well. It's going to be... It, no, that part I realize, but again, that And if we can part, avoid tows, we try to. I, I understand. So that's why I'm really big on the ticketing part. So I don't know if maybe there should be like a new procedure in place or something like that. But what I want to see is that we get in front of it beforehand so that people would be, quote, afraid, end quote, to park their car because the tickets add up. And I know it worked on um, Bishop Street and um, East Ashland because these people found out that they're not supposed to park and they got a ticket and they, you know, were not pleased, but they were parking illegally. Now, I know sometimes these people are tenants and they don't know, they hear things secondhand, but it wasn't top secret. We had those digital boards, which, uh, you know, I was very excited about, and we get the, what do you call it, the um, robocalls, and a lot of people get them on their cells and flashing. So, I mean, again, that, that is a statement. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if, you know, there's all w winter t parking ban, tickets appealing here, they need to go the, to the police station, that's fine. Yeah, we've but, been appealing yeah. tickets. We used to, I go to those ticket hearings. I go to mm -hmm. those appeals with Mary. Yes. And we were doing it once a month. We did it twice a month last month for the appeals. We're writing them. It's just, we're up against it. And yeah. we're going to keep on trying, keep on Okay, because that's, that's what I think is the continuity of it so that maybe we wouldn't get so inundated when it comes to the storm because, like I said, I want to get in front of this. I'm not going to begrudge someone that has a graduation party or something, but if it says no parking and, you know, and then blocking the people's driveways. I mean, remember we but had that whole thing on Cabot Street? It's where never an excuse. If you, they, they're blocking a driveway, give us a call. We'll send a car out. And if it's an emergency, if they have to need medical treatment or anything, we'll go right down there. That changes the priority. We'll that I agree. That, that I agree, and that I respect. And you, you have emphasized that at traffic commission meetings. But that's why I wanted to highlight some of my, you know, streets that are going through a lot of this. And um, you know, of course, the east side because that's what I'm dealing with. But I have noticed a couple of things in other locations. Even this morning, I went down Bouvet, and there was people parked on both sides. And I know I remember that what that's time a Baptist um, Bouvet. Oh, it was like um, I don't know, tenish. Yeah, not in between nine and ten in the morning. But um, again, I realize once in a great while something's going to happen. But if you see a whole lot of it, yeah. I'm sorry. It's the widest street in the city. Yeah, and, and do you know why? No. Because trees used to go down a years ago down the center of it. That's oh, why. okay. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, so. You don't so know. But again, you know, there's two sides. And I know that the minister has said that at the Baptist church there that they are tight for parking. And I remember you saying that you try to be, how would I say it, um, respectful of the churches when we there's do. some overcrowding and whatever. And I understand, you know, people are going to bop in some, you know, sometimes. But I guess I want to get the, the continuous offenders. And that's, and that's why, like I said, Sherman Street, Cabot Street, Sprague Street, and, you know, around. So, again, I'm going to talk about um, my obsession here with the drone going around, and maybe somebody could go. But in all seriousness, maybe there could be some kind of different way to um, look at Well, we're going to keep on plugging. We're supposed okay. to get more another academy class. We're going to get more people. Oh, good. And it's always a process. No, I, I, I realize gotta, that. And, you just got to keep on at it. And I've been on here, it's my 33rd winter, and for 33 years we've always had complaints and we're going to keep on going at it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to do it, we're going to keep on at it. Okay, so I, wa I want to thank you for coming out, and that's why, like I said, I, mean, I want to handle the whole winter part of it, but I want us to be constantly doing it because, again, people have cited on more than one occasion they were concerned, and I know I had a friend that, you know, had a friend or living on a street, and the firefighters couldn't get down. They knocked on the door, and the people would not move their when car. The, when the firefighters yeah. can't get down, yeah. the highway will call us because they plow it. If, they, if it's streets oh, move narrow. Oh, this wasn't even with snow, so that's what was wicked. Oh, they were both on both sides. If that's yeah. a call, we'll yeah. send a cruiser down there. If the fire department can't get down, and we will 
be the ticket one half of it. If, if we can't get emergency apparatus in there, that's a safety issue. That's a priority one. And that's what I'm going to emphasize because that's when people get frustrated. And I think sometimes, and we've talked about this before, sometimes the call takers, maybe they need to rephrase something. Because like I said, this older woman was really concerned. She said they say that there's no supervisor. And I thought, they well, might maybe, have been, They know. might have said they were busy. Yeah. And okay. they could have All been right. busy. Yeah. All right. Just trying to slow you down because there's other counselors that want to talk. Oh, sure. Oh, no, no, thank you. And I appreciate it. And I'll defer to my other counselors. Thank you. We appreciate the resolve as well. Yeah, Counselor okay. you. Lally was next. Okay. Now, you said this was your, uh, your 33rd winter. And this is only my 22nd, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, so what, I've, what I learned from you know, the DPW and, and another issue is that 300 miles of road in the city of Brockton. Uh, there are 100,000 people. Um, and you've get you know you've got your regular calls that you have to factor in, and when it snows you have to add on top of that additional calls that you get for snow related issues. There's always more car Nobody, accidents. It's yeah they don't they don't slow down. Um, I'm encouraged by you know the fact that the last couple of years you've seen the numbers go up, 400 percent is that's 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 nothing to laugh at. Well, that's, um, that's, that's not by me. That, that's actually done by the midnight to eight shift. They're really doing great. I can't take credit for them. They, right. they get on there, they get on their men to do it as best they can. As a, as a department, it does, you know, I think it, I think it reflects well of, you know, uh, you know, every once in a while, you know, people do see cars that, you know, that are still there, but seeing this increase shows that we're, we're going in a positive direction. So I just wanted to, you know, reflect on that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Nicastro. Thank you. Good evening, Kathy Kelsey. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Um, as you know, the, my colleagues probably don't know, you and I have exchanged several messages since the first of the year over several of the snowstorms. Um, it's the funniest thing. I find out about cars not being moved despite the ban the next day when I'm in the line at the bank or when I'm at the supermarket. I don't often get a call during the snowstorm, but I find out after the fact when it's too late to do anything about it. But I, I've looked since I've written to you, and, and uh, the police have been addressing the several streets I've written to you about. Um, there was one that I got a call about uh, a commercial vehicle left on the side of a snowbank, and uh, a fire truck could not get down, and the midnight shift did tow it oh, in the middle of the night. I mean, I think consistent enforcement is going to mean the number of toes will go down because our residents who maybe get a little lax about this know that we mean business. And that seems to be what you're doing, stepping up your game, and I'm very grateful for it. Really makes a difference in Ward 4. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Fowl. I'm just going to briefly say I've been on the other side of being out in the street and actually towing the cars, so and, and I think we have to remember what the captain said. You radio in for a wrecker or a tow truck. A tow truck takes time to get there, especially in bad weather. You've got to hook up to the car. You've got to take it back to the place of business. Now you've got to turn around and you've got to come back. And I just would say respectfully, folks, <clears throat> we can be proactive in ticketing. But if you want to try to tow every car that's parked illegally during a snowstorm, then you better be prepared to spend a couple of million dollars in overtime, because you're going to have to divide the city up into plow routes or tow routes. We already have the city divided into plow routes so that the, the different vendors come in and they know what they're supposed to do. <clears throat> One officer in each of the wards would not be sufficient given the time that's, that's required. So, you know, is it an inconvenience to have someone leave a vehicle on a street and the plow go around it? Yes. But good Lord, if we can get an ambulance down there, we can get a fire truck down there, if we can get an emergency vehicle down there, Sometimes you've just got to understand the financial limitations that we have in the city. We're not going to have, we don't have enough personnel now, and I'm not sure with the 18 officers coming on in the next six to nine months we're going to have enough. But um, a little patience, a little understanding, a little knowledge about what it takes time involved to tow a vehicle and drop it back at the place of business, then turn around and respond again. And the number of officers that would be required to cover all seven wards during inclement weather, in my opinion, would be quite substantial in terms of the overtime that would have to be involved. Because you've got to leave the regular patrol force alone to do its work. So, 
captain, we can always improve, but on balance, and I think that's important, on balance, I think we do a very good job. Are a few people going to be upset? Yes, they probably will, but if they call in and say the street's blocked, that does become a priority, we can take care of it. So, you know, I thank you for the information you've presented, and uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Councilman. <coughs> Council Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Captain, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come down here. Um, you may not know the answer to the question that I'm about to ask you, but in terms of priority call one and two, do you have any idea in terms of like how many you guys have been receiving so far from January until now? I didn't I have mean, that information. Okay. But I, I have the information on parking violations. Okay, okay. But I don't have that information. Because I know you mentioned that, you know, you got a lot of priority calls from one and two, so I'm assuming that this probably sort of like one of the top priority that you guys have, but I think. Well, I was listening to the radio that night and it was on constantly. Yeah. Calls and calls accidents, car stuck in the snow, okay. and other aspects, but I don't have that information. Sounds good. I mean, I myself, too, receive um, a few phone calls in, in regard to people's car being towed, but I, I did tell him that um, I received the message, and if they didn't receive it, um, it's unfortunate because I did know that the mayor sent this information out. But, you know, the reason I asked you that question is because I was asked by a constituent to ask you that question. So if you don't have the information, that's okay, but is there any possibility in which you can sort of like find this information for you, us. I don't what, know how What do you happen. exactly need? In terms of like priority called? From on, the, like, on that particular night? Yes. I can get that for okay. you. I'll be glad I mean, to come in. You can take your time. Just take your time whenever you have the information. I think you can email it, not just to me, but also to all of us. So I would be more than happy to share that information to the person that asked me in okay. terms of like how many calls that you See you in two weeks. No, <laughs> take your time. I'm fine. You, yeah, just take your time. It's okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Council Cruz. Thank you. I wasn't even going to speak on this, but I want to piggyback a little bit on what Councillor Fowell had to say. Um, Belcher Ave is mine, and we do have two houses. We've had a particular problem through the years. However, I have worked closely with the police, and in some cases we've towed, in some cases we've ticketed, but the public has to understand. Belcher Ave, in particular, is one of the widest streets in the city, and when I've talked to the shift commander, he, he has told me, and this has been in my whole 14 years on the council, we have to prioritize the streets where we can't fit fire equipment down. Is it a problem for some of my constituents? It is, and I feel bad about it. But I also think it's incumbent on us to explain to some of those people that it's, this is all about public safety. This isn't about getting this, you know, the, a week after a storm, it can be a problem that there's still snow on the ground there. However, I would hate to know that because the police, because I belly ached so much to get some t tow on Belcher Ave, which can get a, a fire truck down no matter what because it's so wide, that we had a problem, a safe public safety problem on a small side street that where they had to prioritize. I have worked with the police and the DPW on this for 14 years, and I want to thank the police for doing, and again, it's frustrating, and I know three days after the storm, it's frustrating to see that white van still sitting out in front of that house on Belcher Ave, and you gotta drive around it. But the fire truck can get down there, a police car can get down there. And they can't on some of these smaller side streets where we have to prioritize, and I think we do a great job of getting it out there. The biggest problem is getting, and most of these people who claim that they didn't know anything about it, they know totally about the, the ban. They just wanna claim they don't. So. I, I want to thank you and the Chief for the work we do on this and the DPW working with you to prioritize where we have to do these. And uh, the, the job of trying to tow all of those vehicles, we don't have enough places to put them. And we don't have enough time to do it. So thank you for the job you do on it. And Chief, thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Azak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Captain. Um, just a quick question. I know on top of the phone calls and all the complaints, you also have C-click fix complaints. Do you have somebody that's dealing with those with those separately, or do they just get put in with the uh, rest of the Captain calls? Captain Picaro gets them. He gets a C-click fix on the shifts, and if it's a, it's a shift problem, okay. he tries to do it right then. If it's a problem where, for instance, drag racing or signs down, then mm -hmm. I can take that later. It's, that's, if it's for me, it's not time sensitive. For something time sensitive, the shift can handle it. I would prefer them if it's time sensitive to call the station because sometimes I get messages on my phone that there was a car speeding up and down the street on a Friday at five. I'm already home for the weekend. Right. I never get that till Monday. Sorry, I didn't, I meant, I bought, I get a lot of the C-Click fix um, 
complaints that are in our ward that are in Ward 7. So I know we got a lot for the that are parked that are, were um, violated the parking ban. So that's what I meant. Did, so Captain Percaros take care of those as well, or if did they, they get put in? If they get with the C-Click fix on yeah. a snowstorm, they, they won't get put in. They'll just, the, 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 on a storm, have them call the station. Call the station. We okay. have 28 pages of calls of, I believe it was 28 initiated calls by the shift that they did get to. I mean, these guys were working their butts off that night. They were doing other calls, doing it, and if we don't do it, I can explain to them, we were busy on this call. I have a record of it to say we were busy, we were doing this, and I, I can be able to explain it better. Very good, no, I, and I appreciate that. And that's what I tell constituents that call me directly. I tell them, call if it's an emergency, call the police station, I mean, don't. Hopefully we can get to it, but we might not be able to, okay. and at least I can tell them why. Very good, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Monahan, did you want yeah, to? Just a quick yeah, just Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Captain Halsey, don't you also have the plow drivers themselves calling in for tolls if the streets are blocked? Is this an no. issue? It's the uh, highway foreman will. They'll say, you can't okay. cut the corner, you can't do this, we have to tow a car because we have to put the snow on that area and that corner. Right. And they'll, they'll dictate us and we, we follow their lead. We right. work in concert with them. Right, so you've you got those guys out there doing their job already, t towing these, these cars that are actually causing a problem. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councillor Oregon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to go back on two things. Um, I know, you know, I mentioned about the towing because we all know that there were plenty of cars out there. Okay, but the big thing I want to emphasize was, like I said, the continuous ticketing because I would believe that that would be a deterrent. And I know that April 1st, that'll, this will end. But there'll still be plenty of people where there's no parking, that they'll be right there. And those Thank we them. still want to, to get, because we want the message to be clear that we want our streets you know, passable and safe. And, and that, again, that is a concern for a lot of neighbors. You know, they want the, um, and you know, with, with traffic, which everyone is welcome to, this, uh, Thursday evening, 6 p.m., War Memorial Building, and uh, anyone can, you know, come and listen and certainly have input. And uh, this is what you, that's why I wanted to s emphasize that it was, you know, unfortunately we didn't have a bad winter, uh, but that's, I just want it to be a continuum because, again, we'll get into what I call, you know, the party season. And we'll run into again people parking all over the place, and we just want that that message to go out. Now I appreciate you coming in. I appreciate that, and I realize that um, it's not always it's not always about towing. It's about deterring the idea. Just like you know, when you send a message to someone, this is wrong. And you don't want to have to get to the point of punishing because you want to pre be preventative, and that's that's what I was looking at. So thank you again very much. Thank awesome. you. Any other? Uh Comments or questions? Motion been made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Uh, Captain uh, Hallisey, thank you and uh, thank uh, the chief and the entire police department, fire department, all those that are working diligently when we do have um, storms and we've only had a couple, but we appreciate it. Item number five. Resolved to invite Matthew Dyer, representative, urban and community forestry again to inform the public about the free trees program that will begin in the spring invited matthew dyer urban and community forestry it's matthew uh no i don't see him mr chair i did speak to him last wednesday and we reminded him so i hope everything's okay i mean maybe something came up excuse me okay <coughs> <laughs> but um, this, this resolve, as it is every year, kicks off now. The information is available on the city's website, and it's from Department of Conservation and Recreation. So far, they've put up 1,400 trees, and they're ready to put up 600 more this summer, you know, and kick it off, and people can contact. They do have a particular section of the city that they concentrate on. Most of it, I'll be honest with you, is not in Ward 5, but I see Matt all the time going around, and they help people not only set it up, but speaking of which, they're going to have a workshop coming up that's also free, so people can find out about pruning their trees, preventing, how would I say, damage to their property with trees, because we all hear about different stories on that. So all this is available through um, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, and um, they have all the information in different languages and everything. So thank you. Yeah. I, I reached out to this gentleman. It was very successful last year. 
sense. The only, uh, only disappointment that I have as a counselor at large is they have not expanded the geographic area. So, you know, where I grew up on Wellington Street, it stops at Manamit Street, which is a street off. Um, they just, uh, to me, it makes no sense that they wouldn't have. They had a great year, expanded Expand. out to beautify more parts of the city of Brockton, and he said, unfortunately, his hands are tied. So, yes. know, you know. I know about that. Thank you. If, if I could, um, through the chair. <laughs> yes. he, he did mention that. And the idea is, what we want to emphasize repeatedly is this is for people that live, you know, and it's for their homes. And uh, so we try to encourage it, and I'm hoping, you know, like I said, he's all right in, and what have you. But, um, and there's more information available where people can contact me, or they can look it up, and they will plant the tree for you, help you along with it. And there's 40 trees to, types of trees to choose from, and they hope that if they accomplish the 600 this year, then, then they can come back. Again, this is, depends on state funding to uh, expand it. I wish it was expanded too because I'd like it to go further down, you know, the east side, but it seems to concentrate more in Ward 3, 4, and 2. So um, a couple other wards are sort of left out here, temporarily anyway. Yes. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a comment, I, I, and I don't disagree with, with what Council Sullivan said, nor you, Council Borga, because I think they do need to expand it. And, uh, you know, they did do an awful lot last year, um, and that's okay that they put a lot up on some some with city properties as well. Some of our schools got the trees. My concern is, and, and I hope, well, they're, they're, they're listening, I'm sure, but as we always put new shrubs or anything around school buildings or other buildings, it, it's who maintains them, and then all of a sudden it becomes a different issue. And I had three trees taken down at South Junior High School because they were gang green and had to be taken, yes. taken away. But um, I agree with you. I think it needs to expand out. But it is a great program. So everyone can find the information out on the website, though. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's fine. Motion for made and second to do. Uh, recommend favorably to full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full uh, city council favor recommendation. Council, just before I take any other interest that somebody may have before we depart, um, next Monday um, we are scheduled to be here for city council. Um, hopes that maybe we will be at City Hall, but I don't want to put that as a yes yet. Um, be in contact with you people on uh, Wednesday because we have to um, post by Thursday uh, for the City Council meeting. So if we find out something by then, then it will be, um, the mayor has indicated to me he will let the city clerk know ASAP, and then we'll get everything out to us and then move forward. If not, the meeting will be here, and I would think anticipating the next, um, the first meeting we have in April, we would probably be at um, City Hall. That's, that's, the way it's, that's the way it's looking at this point in time. So that be said, any other comments or other further business to come Chairman, before Council Sullivan? Uh, the four other members that sit on the ordinance committee meeting that we will be having an ordinance meeting um, on Wednesday, April 3. Uh, and tentatively, again, like the president just said, the acting president, it, it's scheduled for City Hall at 6 p.m. on that day. It's only going to be one agenda item that night. And we know what it is, mm -hmm. so that's uh, anything else. Any other business before this group? Seeing none, meeting adjourned.